What's going on you guys? In this video, I'm gonna show you how I modeled, printed, and painted Shaggy Magala from the smaller size to this larger size. I wanted a statue that was a lot bigger in size to match my Gore Magala figure, but the only figure I had was this little one right here. So the simplest solution was to create my own. I'm a huge fan of Monster Hunter, and Shaggy Magala is my absolute favorite Elder Dragon. Follow along as I take you through the full build process from start to finish. Let's go. This is the beginning of the whole sculpt. I'm uh, basically blocking out the body. What I want to do here is just get the main forms kind of figured out. And I apologize for it uh, zooming in and out continuously. Uh, this is a new thing to me, so the other next videos will be a lot better than this. And I'll have it, uh, I guess, more polished. <laughs> but here, what I'm working on is the arms and legs. I'm working on the calves in this, this shot. You can't really see it. And now the thigh going up into the hip and the iliac crest, making sure that it all flows really well. These are the wing arms. And I want to make them large uh, and very menacing, but I also want to make them look very realistic, like it would actually work in the real anatomy of the monster. I'm building up the uh, muscles that connect it, and then also the biceps and the triceps of those arms. Now what I want to do is make it a little bit bigger and polish, get the forms down so I can start detailing next. And this is where it really improves. This is the face. The face was very basic as a block out, just getting my light lines, knowing where I'm going. And then I went ahead and did the jaw as well and really built it out, made it so I had a form that I could build upon. Nothing crazy, just very simplified so I can add the details. Uh, here you can actually see the details in this next scene uh, start to be built. And then once I do this, I have the block out. This is the main body form. And that allows me to do all the details and actually pose my monster. And this is the final result of all that work. It doesn't look like a lot, but that was about 18 hours. And then here's me going in and splicing the model. Splicing is where I cut apart the model and add the keys so that when I create this model and 3D print it, it's not only easier to 3D print, but allows uh, you guys to actually put the model together and have it look seamless and flawless. Now, there are always gonna be some scene lines uh, just because whenever you cut something, it does delete a little bit of space, but I try to minimize that as much as possible, make it look very fluid. Uh, usually I have it interconnect. After I get done with doing that, you can see here, I took all those parts that I keyed and spliced and I put them on the printing bed. Now this is the resin printer um, using the Peel Poly L and this one allows me to do a large uh, volume print. And then I go in here and I actually place every single support. So every one of those gray little uh, cones you see, I actually have to go in and place them. I place them very uh, systematically so that I create that. And that's the structure for 3D printing so I don't have any errors because it's very expensive to do these prints, not only in resin costs, but also in uh, the printing costs because the machine has to be uh, fixed, LCD screen has to be fixed every 200 hours. So it gets very expensive. Here I'm doing FDM printing for the base. It's just an easier, more simplified way. And here's me putting it in the printer, getting it started. The, this way I can print large parts that aren't too complex, but have great detail. And here you can see I'm doing the same thing with the wings. The wings are massive. And to do that in resin would be very expensive um, and not very cost effective. So here you can actually see them being printed, even though there are some errors when the pieces are printed, as long as the piece is solid with no errors on the piece, I can go ahead and utilize that. And here's me just removing some of the supports, cleaning it up, making sure everything works well and that it's a usable piece. Um, and then here's on the Mono X pieces that I printed for the body. This was another print I did because I had mess ups. So this is the old base. It's uh, a lot smaller than the new one. This is the new base. Because I changed the wings, I had to make it bigger so it could support the extra weight. Uh, here's an example of a printed wing. Once it's done, here's a bunch of the uh, mistakes and wasted material. So you can see, it takes a lot of effort to get to the final draft. That's why these take so long. But then you can see the details are absolutely super amazing. And that's what I'm going for is a perfect print. So I have the new wings, one on my uh, S5, and then one on the CR10. And so what I'm trying to do is have them print as quick as possible, along with a complete set over here. And then I also have the full body finalized in here. So this is version two. So it's a little bit different than the other one. It's a little bit bigger as well. Um, it's kind of hard to see in there, isn't it? I'll open this up. So you can see all the parts are done printing. And then I'm gonna have to take those off, clean them, 
and the ultrasonic cleaner. And here is the old version body parts. So the new one, it's not too much bigger, but maybe five or 10% bigger, but they come out perfect. So really cool to see the final, final outcome, but you can see these are all parts, uh, multiple parts for printing. And so there's always errors that occur. Not always, sometimes I get lucky with the first batch, but most of the time there's errors. So then I reprint them and I'll reprint them until I get perfect uh, supports and uh, you can see the supports I put on myself so it's a trial and error there's a devil hoe over there getting ready to get shipped out I'm putting on gloves to protect my skin from the resins they can cause irritations and even uh, ration or blisters I take the build plate out of my resin printer and I go ahead and take all the parts off the build plate once I get all the parts off the build plate I go ahead and get the ultrasonic cleaner ready I fill it up with isopropanol alcohol 91% and put all the parts in I set the timer for five minutes on the machine so that they can clean. And once I take them out, they're safe to handle. I make sure that I just set the supports up independently, not only for efficiency and getting good printed parts, but also allows me to just take the supports off. It doesn't leave any damage to the piece. And the deep pieces are very highly detailed still. Once all the pieces have had their supports removed, I go ahead and set them back inside the tray and get it prepared again for another bath. After this bath, I'm ready to go ahead and build my model. This is my favorite part. What I'm doing is I'm putting all the pieces together to see the final printed product that I have. This allows me to find any errors or anything else I need to complete or if I need to do any reprints or fix anything on the model. After I get finished with this, it's time for the paint. What I've done is I put a base coat of gray on. That was my primer. And now I'm going over with this awesome gold. It's got a great gold sheen and allows it so that it has a realistic gold look, which I was really going for on this guy. I really love how the gold came out. What I'm doing now is I'm applying a base color of black because I found this really cool metallic uh, purple blue color. And the only way to use it is if it has a black base. So I'll go ahead and get all the parts that I wanna use that color on black right now, bring down this nice little base coat. And once it's done, I'll be able to go ahead and apply the new metallic color. This color scheme was a lot simpler than I thought it would be. It took quite a bit of work, a couple hours of painting, but it was well worth the turnout. Once all the black was finally laid and I had all the parts the way I wanted them, I was go able to go ahead and start the detailing process, especially for the base to make it uh, look more realistic and rocky. Here I'm applying that really neat color. It allows it to have that really cool gleam. You can really see it pop on these hands, and especially the wings once I get it airbrushed on. The last thing to do is color all the spikes and the horns on the body, and I decided to go with this copper metallic color that I thought would make it look even more cool. Here it is, you guys, the Shagri Magala figure. I had an absolute blast working on this. It was a lot of fun. Be sure to hit that like and that subscribe so you can see future videos of other monsters and creatures that I'll be creating. I love you guys. Till next time.